All right, so in this video, uh, as I mentioned in the last video, that we're gonna be playing around with the graphs of sine, cos, and tan, and we're gonna see what the effect uh, is of uh, adding one to it, subtracting a certain value, not necessarily one, could be anything, and multiplying it by a certain value, or perhaps positive or negative, and then we're gonna see the effects of that on uh, each and every single graph. Now, there is a way through which, I mean, there are multiple ways through which you can directly make the graph like for example in this example you have y equals to sine x plus one now <clears throat> you can you can uh, have a more direct approach like for example you can work out the values of sine x plus one using the table that i've made over here but i'm not going to do that right away what i want is i want to i want you guys to be able to see the effect of plus one on y equals to sine x okay so i'm going to take the a, a bit of a longer approach but i'm only going to do that initially once you've understood the concept then we're going to have a more direct approach okay <clears throat> so you have y equals to sine x plus one now if you recall the original graph of sine so at zero it's zero at uh, 90 it's one at 180 it's zero again at 270 it's minus one and at 360 it's back at zero so originally this is what the graph of sine x looks like so let's try and make a nice and smooth curve there you go, okay. Now adding one to it means that all the values will now be shifted one unit upwards. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna copy this graph and I'm gonna paste it again, shifting it one unit up. So the graph that you see now, uh, the one on top, let me just turn this to blue so we can color code it, yeah. This is the graph of y equals to sine x plus one, okay. Now, if you wanted to do this directly, let me just move this slightly downwards. Yeah, if you wanted to do this directly, what you would have, what you should have done is you should have used your calculator, okay? Again, you can use the table feature, which I've made a video on. I'll post a link to it again. Uh, I posted it in the last video also. So if you, if you wanted to have a more direct approach, you could have started with sine zero plus one, okay? Something like this, okay? And then you would have gotten one. So that means at zero, it's one. And just like that, uh, if you plug in 90 in place of X, so it's two at 180, it's one again, at 270, it's zero, at 360, it's one again. And then this way you could have had a more direct approach. But as I mentioned that in this particular question, I wanted you to see the effect of plus one. And that means that the graph is unit, one unit up. Okay. <clears throat> So here's another question where you have y equals to two cos x minus one, but this time you can see that I've highlighted the range because that's something we need to pay close attention to. You're only allowed to go from zero to 180. So we'll see the effect of that. So first of all, let's make the graph of cos x. And if you remember the shape of cos x from before, at zero, it's one, at 90, it's zero, at 180, it's minus one. Now, normally we, we would go to 360, okay? But here we can't do that. So this is where we stop and there you go, okay? Now what do you do? Since it's cos x minus one, so you copy and paste, well, too bad you can't do that. But anyway, uh, cos x minus one basically means that we take every single value and we shift it one unit downward. Sorry about that. Okay, so let me show you the, what exactly has happened. So what was one has now moved to zero. What was at zero has now moved to minus one and what was at uh, minus one has now moved to minus two. And I'm gonna color this blue. And one thing that I should mention, <coughs> sorry about that is that you don't need to have the original graph okay so the reason why i'm making the original graph is to show you guys the transition and again if you wanted to have a more direct approach towards this question you could have just plugged in the values and worked them out so at zero it's going to be zero at 90 it's going to be minus one at 180 it's going to be minus two okay now you have y is equals to two sine x and you have to make this from zero to 360 now what you can see here is that uh, it's y is equals to two sine x, okay? Now, what that means is that all the values are now gonna be multiplied by two. Now, because we're multiplying, some of the values may change, some of them may not uh, may, may not change, okay? So let's see what that, uh, let's see how this works. So we're gonna start with y equals to sine x. Okay, so at zero, it's zero, at 90, it's one, at 180, it is minus one, at 270, it's minus four, uh, at 180 is zero, 270 minus one, 360 zero. So this is what y is equals to two sine x looks like. So it's going up, then coming back down, at minus one, it turns, then it goes back up again. Okay, now if you multiply all the values by two, so what's gonna happen is our graph is gonna get taller, okay? So let me show you how that works. So at zero, if you multiply it by two, sadly, nothing happens, okay? At 90, it's one, but if you multiply that by two, so it goes up to two. At 180, it remains zero. At 270, it's minus one. When you multiply that by two, so it becomes minus two. 
at 360 it's zero so multiplying it by two makes no difference at all and now we have ourselves the graph of two sine x okay i can do better than that there whoops sorry about that okay i think i need to fix the position of this point yep much better Okay, there you go. And you have we have ourselves uh, the graph of y is equals to 2 sine x. Okay, now we have y is equals to minus tan x and this time also you're only allowed to go till 180 degrees. So let's see how that works. Okay, so y is equals to minus tan x. So we're gonna start with the graph of tan x and at tan x, you know, there's something very important. I mean, with tan x, you know, there's something important and that is the asymptote and that we have at exactly 90 degrees. So we have it over here. At 45, it's equal to one. So at 45, it's one. At 90, it goes to infinity. So what I'm making right now is I'm making y equals to tan x, okay? So let's take this to infinity. Uh, where did you come from? Delete, let's extend this. And then from 90 onwards, it starts from negative infinity. And at 135, it's minus one. And uh, at 180, it's zero again. So there you go. I think I can do better than that. Yep, that's better. Okay, now what I want you to see is the effect of multiplying it by minus one, okay? And uh, if, you, if you've done uh, transformation in, in math, yeah, in O-level math, so you probably know what I'm talking about, okay? Even if you haven't, you'd still have an idea basically. So multiplying this by minus one means that all the values, all the positive values are now getting negative and all the negative values are now becoming positive, okay? So this graph I'm gonna make in, uh, wait a minute, I'm gonna turn this to red, okay? So red, red, there you go, okay. Now the new graph I'm gonna make in blue, okay? So what happens when you multiply zero by minus one? Well, nothing happens, okay, it just remains zero. But what happens when you multiply one by minus one, it becomes uh, minus one. And what was uh, at positive infinity will now be negative infinity. So that means when you get close to 90, our value tends to be a very high positive value, but now it's gonna be a very high positive value. It's gonna be an extremely low negative value. Okay, so that means our graph, our new graph, the original graph is gonna look like this, okay? And uh, let's not let's now talk about the part that's after 90. So at 180, it's zero. So nothing's gonna happen to that. At 135, it was minus one, but now it's gonna be plus one. And it's not gonna go to negative infinity anymore. Instead, it's gonna go to positive infinity. There you go, okay? And I'm gonna erase this graph so that it doesn't create a lot of confusion. So there you go. This is what the graph of y equals to minus tan x looks like, okay? so. We, we played around a little with these graphs. We saw what happens when you multiply, we saw what happens when you when you add something, subtract something, when you multiply it by a positive value, negative value. And uh, the, these are the main concepts that I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, we're gonna play around with these graphs even more. And we're gonna see what happens when you multiply, when you, when you change the range, what if when it's negative? We're gonna see what happens when you multiply x with a certain value. Like for example, what if it's tan 2x or what if it's um, sine 2x, okay? Then we're gonna uh, find some, some new concept where you'll have to make more cycles, okay, depending on uh, what the natural period is and what the range is. But yeah, for that, you'll have to wait until the next video. So yeah, that's all for this video. I hope you liked and uh, benefited from it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.